Composing Gloves here. Today we are going to be looking at envelopes in the third video on the Massive from the Ground Up tutorial series. So there are four envelopes, one, two, three, four, and they're blue. You click on them to access them. They are always visible regardless of any tab you're on before. You just click on it and bang, you now have an envelope. So today we're going to be talking specifically about um, envelope number four. Now, the reason these envelopes are important is because they are modulation sources, meaning they tell a signal how to behave. And then you can take that signal and route it to something like we already talked about our oscillator tab. So you could put it in the wavetable position if you watched the previous video. And you can tell how much you want it to be affected by that particular uh, signal behavior. And then this will therefore move on its own. You won't see it move, but you'll hear it move. Um, and meaning you'll hear the effects of the modulation signal being sent, telling that signal to move around. So these are called controlling signals. They're not audio signals. So um, we're going to talk about number four because number four by default is on your amp module, amplification, meaning volume. And so when you open up Massive, that is the envelope that dictates volume for the entire Massive, unless you change it, which you can if you want. I pretty much always just leave it there just for consistency's sake. So let's get right to it. Um, you have presets right here, this first menu. You have factory presets and user presets that you can create. And you can also copy and paste presets. So you can go to like another envelope and say you've made a particular uh, envelope that you really like its behavior and you want to save it you can or copy and paste it you can copy it and then come over here and paste it like so copy paste bang now your envelope is that you can also save an envelope so like you can just click it and name it i'm not going to because why would i save that i've never really personally made my own envelopes and saved them i've always just kind of made them so I don't know, but you can if you want. And if for whatever reason you want to delete them, you can using this. You It shows the default envelopes that you can delete too, but I do not believe you can delete that. However, I do not recommend trying it. So um, we're going to talk about these bottom knobs and I'll come back to these, these upper knobs here in a second and these guys. So like I said earlier, because this is linked to our amplification, we will be able to hear it affect our volume. And these are what are called ADSR envelopes, meaning attack, decay, um, ADS, sustain, release. And so we have our attack, decay. This is our sustain, even though it says level. And release is way over here, this guy. And then we have a special release uh, module in the middle as well. Um, okay, so there's also a delay knob here, which delays the start. And as you see, when you make it, adjustments to these knobs you'll see the uh, envelope alter itself so right now if we play it you hear and then so you hear it turn on it decays a bit then it sustains and it will loop this in the particular mode i have it on in the sustain mode until i let go of the key and when i let go of the note i'm pushing it'll do the release so if i turn the release up if i turn it way up it's much more noticeable there you have it, a super long release. So we're gonna keep that short. There's a few different uh, general envelope shapes, but we're just gonna go over the knobs real quick. And as you can see, these each can receive their own um, modulation source. So you can like modulate envelopes, different parameters on your envelope while your sound is playing, creating some really interesting and unique sounds. Um, you have a delay knob, which delays. So I'm gonna hit the key. And it takes a second to get started if I turn it way up, hold it, and there it goes. So the delay just delays your sound. I've never used this, but I'm sure it's very useful in pads or other um, synthesis design if you're looking for that sort of a thing. You have your attack, which is how quickly it attacks. So if we have it way out there, very slow attack and it will reach that peak volume, which sometimes isn't always desirable. So you have a level knob, so you can adjust what the peak of the attack would be. And so that's really, so if you wanna pluck, just come over here and you have for your, well, we're gonna talk about plucks in a sec. So that's your attack and that's what your level does. 
And again, you can send other envelopes or various other things that can be sent here to control the parameters. So you can change these over time and create really cool effects according to the modulation source you're sending there. Then you have decay, which is this middle ground here. You see how it goes down right here? That's your decay. This straight line over here is your sustain, which is dictated by this, like how loud you want your sustain to be. So if we set our decay to short and our sustain down, you just get a real quick pop. And if we turn the level up, you can hear it sustain if you hold the key down. And then as you can see right there, very little decay. We can turn the decay down a lot, meaning the time it takes to decay there. Or we can just get rid of the decay altogether by setting both the levels at the same rate. Um, you and So that's one way to achieve a pluck. It can also be done with the release knob. Um, which you'll understand as I explain more of these buttons and things. But that's what Decay and Release do. Now, uh, now we'll talk about these knobs up here real quick. Actually, we'll talk about all of these. So, first we'll start off with the linear. So, right now the Decay, as you can see, Attack is linear. It's a straight line. But the de Decay is logarithmic, meaning it goes down in values of 10. I totally suggest looking up logarithmic number lines because we hear logarithmically. We, don't, we do not hear linearly, which is a number line where all the numbers are evenly spaced out. A linear number line takes into account um, the, the distancing between the numbers in a ratio fashion. So yeah, just look up a logarithmic number line. It's, it's like really entertaining to learn about. You won't regret it because at first you'll be like, what? There are different number lines if you haven't heard of it before so uh yeah so this changes it to linear which makes it a straight line so if we were to go back and change our level but if it was linear i mean logarithmic it happens boom it goes down a lot faster so that's what linear does you have gate now these are the modes that you can have it interpret your uh, envelope in. So gate is what you would typically associate would happen when you push a key on your synthesizer. You push the key and it goes through and it gets to the sustain and it just keeps sustaining as long as you hold the key and then when you let go the release is triggered. So that's why release is different than decay. It happens when you let go of the note. That's why it's called release. If we turn the release up and you can see they can be used in conjunction. A lot of times, decay and release achieve the same effect, but they are very different parameters and are used in different situations. It can be used together, like we just used it. So that's what gate does, like the play. The one shot is you push it, and it will play through the envelope once, regardless of when you let go of the key. So if I were to turn my attack up, and let's turn the volume down, and let's turn the level up and the release up. So I'm going to just hit the key once really quickly and you'll hear the entire envelope trigger. If we turn the um, decay up even more so it's longer, and there we go. That was a long, a long decay, but I pushed the the key wants and it played that whole thing very useful for percussive hits especially if you're making like hard style or something like that where you need something that'll trigger the whole sample every time without you worrying about whether or not you pushed another key then we have this hold feature now the hold works like you push a key once and it will just continue to hold that note in the sustain value technically there's no release So you'd have to change modes to get to a different release. But you can also play chords by holding down a note or pushing multiple notes simultaneously. But as you also change notes, it'll switch to that note. So I'm just plucking notes right now. I'm not holding down anything. And there you have it. That's the hold option. That's what that does. I saw some people. Now, now we're going to talk about the zero trigger reset. 
trigger uh, reset zero, whatever. Trigger zero reset. I said it right the first time. I saw, I've saw. i tried looking this up. I've read the manual and I've seen so many people that do videos of this where they don't even demonstrate what the different envelopes do. They just read the manual and it takes everything I have not to comment nice manual reading or whatever because like, I don't know, it's, this is ridiculous. But this trigger reset, um, what the manual says it's supposed to do is when you play an envelope and it gets to the release value or it's playing through maybe on one shot mode and the envelope hasn't quite finished, but you start another note via MIDI, it will start, that note will start at the volume the previous note was at. But I have tried when it's off. When it's on, it always starts back at the beginning of the envelope at zero. But I have tried for all I can to get it to do that and I cannot get it to do that. It plays as if it were on a gate mode as far as volume is concerned. Even if I turn the release all the way up, it's more it's more clear that it doesn't work when you turn the attack way up. So I'm holding down the C, C's going up, now I'm gonna hit a G. And there's the G, it started at zero, just like, turn that down. It started at zero just the same. So I don't know if I'm misunderstanding the manual or what's going on here because I just cannot get this to work for the life of me. So I'd say that this button doesn't work <laughs> or I'm misunderstanding it. So please drop a comment if you know what I'm doing wrong or if I have an error or something. So that's what all these do. Now you know what those do. So this is velocity. Basically when it's at zero, it, it's not sensitive to velocity unless you specifically trigger set velocity via your DAW or something else. But if you were to turn it up, and I were to hit my key soft, and if I hit it loud, it gets louder. I don't have the best keyboard, but that's what velocity does. Basically just velocity, sensitivity, and then KTR, keyboard tracking. I believe the R stands for, I'm not gonna say what the R stands for, because I have forgotten. But what it does is it makes, it sort of acts like a, a roll off filter. That's what I want to guess the R stands for. But so lower notes are louder and higher notes are softer. So if you have something with a lot of high frequency content to the point where it's kind of hurts your ears, you can turn this up and it will balance out your low end and your high end. It may make your low end too pronounced. So you might want to, you know, you turn it up or down according to what you want. So for example, here's a low C really loud. Here's the same C up high. And it's really, it's still there, but it's not like super loud. If we turn the KTR off, it's much louder. And let me tell you, there's a lot more frequency content up there. So that this can be a very useful knob, um, sort of acts like an EQ adjustment. So you can use your EQ for other things. Then, uh, you have the morphing options. All right. So this is the last the last part i believe i already yeah i explained to release so the morphing options are you have a, a loop option a morph option and you have all these morphing shapes so what happens is you play your envelope and it goes through the attack and it gets to the decay and then it goes to the sustain and this is a special sustain option so if we turn it on using this loop boom new new sustain option it it goes through your first envelope but then it goes through this second the sustain and what it does is it loops through a, whatever you make this and they have a whole bunch of preset sine waves similar to how the wavetables are preset it's the same way with this so let's go with like expo times four and you can choose two of these and they pop on top of each other and you can use your morph knob to morph between them and you can also modulate this so it's kind of like I guess I'll just play it real quick so you hear it. So we'll hear it go up, and because this is volume, you hear the volume go down and down again and back up a little and then all the way down and then up and down, like so. As you can see, it sounds, it sounds kind of just miscellaneous right now because I'm not really trying to create something specific. And this loop, it tells it how many times you want it to loop through this sequence. You can go all the way up to an infinite. Uh, it's like right under 
32, 30. That's weird. There it is. Oh, yeah. Anyways, you can go to infinite. Might be annoying trying to select it, but you can go there. So, <laughs> uh, this morph morphs between the two shapes that you select via these guys. I believe I already said that. The level indicates the, as you can see, it's right there. The level, you can see visually what's happening. It controls the endpoint level according to the shape you selected, which will also affect release if you're using this option. If you loop it infinitely, oh, there it goes. I guess if you set it to 33, it automatically goes to infinite. So you heard it go through the envelope and then out. Now this S loop is basically just the time that it takes. Really, uh, this is really fast, slow, looks slow. There we go. So that's really slow. And there it is again. So you just heard it go down over here and then it's just looping through. Now we can make it really fast by simply moving it the other direction. And there you have it. That's what that does. Um, and now you can use this in conjunction with what you know about the oscillator tab from the previous video and create some really unique, interesting sounds, wavetable movement, things like that, simply by dragging it over and just applying it. Let's make this loop faster. You can hear it going between the square and the saw wave. Let's go to something that's very noticeable. Oh, I just realized too, we're using the number four. Let's go over here to envelope two, like I said we could do. Oh, let's even, uh, let's copy and paste it. Cause we can do that. And let's put it on here. Let's make envelope four not loop through that. And we'll put it on gate mode. And you can hear it moving through. As you can see, you can hear it going through the parameters that we set. If we set the attack to really long, you'll hear it, if we make it effect like this, you'll hear it slowly morph between the different ones until we reach this loop zone. There you go. So that went through all the different options and it started looping through it really quickly. Sort of selecting bits and pieces of this. Um, so if you could imagine this shape, it'd go like snap here, snap here, snap back down, snap up a little, snap back down. With this particular shape, if we were to morph it, it would just slowly morph through them backwards. And you'd go backwards and then sk skip back up to the top. It's important to be able to visualize this in your head and to understand what the motion of this knob would be if it did move. That way you can understand how you would apply envelopes as source controllers. So those are envelopes in a nutshell. If you have any comments about this, uh, drop them in the comments. I try to be as clear as possible. And uh, subscribe, check out my music, posinggloves.com. And have a blessed day.